Welcome to your writing tutorial. This tutorial will help you write a paragraph response to a prompt from any discipline – math, science, social studies, English, and more. As you watch, feel free to pause to take notes, rewind to understand important details, and look at your assignment and writing as you attend to the example in the video. Ready? Let's go! Today we will explore compare-contrast writing. This is the second video on this writing topic. If you have not seen the first video, you may wish to review it. The writing task for compare-contrast writing is clear. You may be asked to show similarities between two subjects. You may be asked to show differences between those two subjects. Or you may be asked to show two or more different aspects of the same subject. Regardless of the task, you are writing compare-contrast. Let's look at a math example. Here is our prompt. The organizers of a walkathon want to advertise the event. Two companies submitted their cost for making the brochures. Determine which company offers the better price for the brochures. Support your answer with a table and graph for each. This is a real-life problem, and it demonstrates two different options for a pricing. That means we're dealing with compare-contrast. Let's take a look at a student example. It depends. Each company has its advantages and disadvantages. Company B is better until a certain point where Company A is better. So if you order 0 to 4 brochures, it will cost 5, 10, 15, or $20 from Company B, and 17, 19, 21, or 24 from Company A. Now if you order 5, the prices will be the same, $25. Now if you order 6 or more, Company A will always be better. This student answer demonstrates some weaknesses in writing. Let's take a look at them piece by piece. First, let's examine the topic sentence. The student has written, it depends, each company has its advantages and disadvantages. A topic sentence in a paragraph like this should always restate the prompt. Then, it should answer the prompt. So far, the student has not done either of these clearly. Looking at the prompt again, we can examine it clearly for the subject that will form the grammatical subject of our topic sentence. Two subjects present themselves as possible nouns that we could use in our topic sentence, organizers and company. Why are these good? Because they are nouns that clearly indicate the people, organizations involved in the problem. We want to focus on the organizers or the two companies. Right now, the student is using the word it. It depends. This sentence demonstrates a comma splice. It is a run-on sentence, and the it demonstrates a lack of clarity. The student has not written a clear topic sentence. We can revise with organizers. Organizers of the event should choose either company based on the number of brochures ordered. This revised sentence accomplishes both of our tasks. It restates the prompt by using language from the prompt itself and focusing on the important subject organizers. It also adds an answer. By reading the subsequent sentences in the paragraph, we can see that the number of brochures ordered will determine which company is the better choice. We have abridged that information into a clear topic sentence. The writing is already improved, but let's improve it even further. First, we can take out that second sentence because we've included it in the first. But then we move on to sentence structure. Each sentence in the paragraph should demonstrate a clear structure. Look at this. So if you order 0 to 4 brochures, it will cost 5, 10, 15, or $20 from Company B, and 17, 19, 21, or 24 from Company A. This sentence suffers because it does not present a clear subject that presents consistency with the rest of the paragraph. We always want to use a strong subject, and remember, the strong subject is usually dictated by the prompt itself. Before, we have seen that words like organizer or company will serve as strong subjects. We want to use those in our revision. If the organizers order 0 to 4 brochures, it will cost 5, 10, 15, or $20 from company B and 17, 19, 21, or 24 from company A. Already we see improvement because the word organizers has repeated. The writer is now using a strong subject, and the writer is keeping a consistent pattern for writing throughout the paragraph. You 
becomes organizers. We have improved the writing. Let's look at another sentence. Now if you order five, the prices will be the same, $25. We see the same problem. This writer is not using a strong subject. Nowhere in the prompt did we see the word you or the implication that we should use it. If they order five, the prices will be the same, $25. This revision uses the word they as a subject. They refers to organizers. You may use pronouns as strong subjects if the nouns they refer to are clearly established. In the topic sentence, the word it was not a clear pronoun subject because we did not know what it referred to. They clearly refers to organizers. You is replaced by they, clarifying and strengthening the sentence. The student answer continues to be improved. Let's improve it further by using transition words and phrases. Transition words and phrases are vital in showing how each sentence develops from the next. We want to use transition words and phrases that indicate compare and contrast. Words and phrases like but, however, on the other hand, even though, or likewise. These words and phrases should be clear. You should use fewer words to clarify the relationships among different sentences. Here we see that one sentence actually contains two contrasting ideas. We can split these sentences, use a transition word or phrase, and clarify them. If the organizers order zero to four brochures from company B, they will spend five, ten, fifteen, or twenty dollars. End the sentence, and then include a transition phrase. On the other hand, if they order from company A, they will spend $17, $19, $21, or $24. The idea of contrast is clear because the two ideas have been separated into different sentences and joined by a transition phrase, on the other hand. Again, the student answer is clarified. If you wish to accomplish a clearly written paragraph, you will follow three steps. First, answer the prompt in the topic sentence by finding the correct subject and providing an answer. Look at the prompt carefully to understand the noun that you should use in your topic sentence, and be sure to provide a clear answer in that sentence. Use strong subjects throughout the paragraph, and use transition language to join each sentence to the next to show progression of ideas. If you can accomplish all three of these tasks, you can write a clear paragraph that will demonstrate your mathematical knowledge to your math teacher.